So now in this video we're going to look at the 78L05, the one I have is the WS78L05, but in any case it's in a TO92 package like a uh, regular transistor 2N2222, 2N2904, uh, those uh, transistors, it's the same package but it's not a transistor, it's a voltage regulator, which means you give it a higher voltage, it outputs 5 volts. It actually outputs uh, 5 volts in relationship to the uh, ground pin right there. So you can actually adjust it by adjusting the voltage at the ground pin. But in uh, any case, uh, when you have ground on both sides of the load and the ground pin right there, you have 5 volts out in relationship to that. So we have the LED there. I'll turn the power on. And it uh, doesn't matter if I set it to 7 volts or 20 volts or whatever, LED is going to stay the same brightness. And uh, I did a calculation, I didn't actually measure this, but we should get it, be getting about 13.6 milliamps of current through the load there, no matter what the supply voltage is within that range. So here we uh, shift the uh, power supply over, we're powering the uh, circuit right there, 7 volts, doesn't matter, I can go up, it uh, may you know shift a little bit right there, but it's holding practically steady. So I said 13.6 milliamps of current, this isn't as accurate as what I would measure with the uh, multimeter measuring current and uh, the little integrated circuit even though it's in a transistor package maybe using up some current and stuff but you can see we uh, almost tripled the supply voltage and current held steady and the reason why is because this is holding 5 volts across there it's uh, basically making it harder for current to flow through as needed to maintain 5 volts across the load and of course it's good to always measure voltage when you're dealing with circuits that deal with voltage. So I have the power supply set to uh, 7 volts. There's a little resistance in the wires and stuff. Uh, but in case there you can see it looks like uh, 6.96 making it to that point. And then we come down here uh, 4.982 right there. So it's 5 even though we got uh, 7 pulling across the load. Let's see how it does if we uh, just jump right to 20 volts right there. So first we'll measure the supply voltage, verify that that is 20 volts. Going across the whole circuit there, just a spec shy. And again, we'll have just a spec shy of 5 volts. But uh, that's practically the exact same 5 volts across the load that we had when we had 7 volts, which was almost a third of the supply voltage. Now, of course, this is going to get uh, the more voltage. This has to... Uh, basically drop down it's like adding more resistance it makes it harder for the current to flow through basically in order to maintain that voltage and uh, so it gets uh, really hot the more voltage that uh, you put across it it gets hotter and zooming in we have the uh, pin layout this is whether it's the Texas instrument version or this one right here which says WS at the beginning same pin layout uh, doesn't matter middle pin is ground uh, right there and then we have the left side there is voltage out so if we swivel this to the right it would be down to the bottom you can see it to the bottom across the load and then we have the voltage in again swiveling it to the right it would be the top pin and that's up there that's the positive supply coming in and we come over here so as we saw before i used uh, 7 volts to 20 volts power this that's the recommended uh, voltage range you can go up to a 30 volts max with them according to both uh, data sheets also we have the capacitor here so that is parallel to the uh, input pin and the ground pin right there as you can see and i used a 0.1 microfarad in this video i think i had a really good reason to use it in an earlier video i think it's the bare minimum you could use or something you should really uh, use a capacitor there this one is not polarized by the way you can put it in in either direction but i showed the uh, polarized uh, symbol where the uh, plus is uh, on the more positive side and the curve is uh, where you put the negative side you may not always see a plus so uh, it's good to pay attention to that but in any case if it's not a polarized capacitor you can put it in either way it doesn't matter so, um, I think 0.1 microfarad, which is 100 nanofarad, is the bare minimum you should use. You can go any bit higher than that. A lot of data sheets show uh, 0.33 microfarad here and a 0.1 microfarad on that side. It's best to have one on that side as well, but I did not add one to this video. But in any case, as I said before, uh, 7 to 20 volts uh, is uh, the recommended range. Absolute max, 30 volts. And... It also says on the data sheet 
that these are internally limited, limited when it comes to the power, which means you should not be able to overpower it. It should protect itself. The 7805 that I tested in the past, they limited current. They dropped voltage in order to prevent themselves from getting any hotter once they got uh, hot enough. And I tested that out with uh, one of these and uh, it looks like I fried it uh, a while ago. So I didn't test it again recently. I don't want to fry a bunch of these, but uh, I'm not sure if these really do protect themselves. Maybe the uh, Texas Instrument version would have done better, um, but that's what they claim on the data sheets. And then we can go up to 100 milliamps of continuous output current. Um, I would probably stick with like 50 milliamps or less. Usually it's best to go halfway below the maximum. But uh, in any case, this went on really long. I hope you enjoyed.